Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth Bolander here. And I want to talk to you today about the power in these tiny rectangular computers that are in our pockets wherever we go and can be used for something so much greater than listening to podcasts and not missing a deal on Amazon Prime Day. I mean, hey, I'm not judging you because I, I didn't want to miss a deal on Amazon Prime Day and I did use this, so yeah, we're in that same boat together. But I want to talk about disruptive innovation and how technology has changed the face of protests. I'm currently reading a memoir called Being Human, that's H-E-U-M-A-N-N, I'll play on her name, about a woman named Judy Human who's an advocate for the rights of people with dif differing abilities. She herself has been in a wheelchair most of her life because of the effects of polio, which she caught as a toddler. I'm in a section of the book where she's part of a sit-in to get Section 504 signed um, and implemented in 1977. Section 504 had actually been passed in 1973, but by 1977 there were still no regulations published, and so no real implementation of Section 504. The protesters occupied 10 health, education, and welfare offices across the country. And at first, people were allowed to come and go as they please, and protesters could therefore get access to food and changes of clothes and medications. But as the days wore on, the protesters were allowed to leave, but they were not allowed to come back in. So no people were allowed to come into the office. Um, now, this may be hard to imagine, but at this time, people relied on what we would now call the legacy media, reporters, camera crews, etc., to disseminate and to gain information. So people on the outside who might have been supporters and might have put some more pressure on the powers that be to enact change, they didn't even know what was going on in the sit-in. In fact, one of what Judy Human called her secret weapons, was that protesters in the building who communicated via sign language would go to the window and they would sign to supporters on the street below. Thus, what some people thought was a disability or considered a disability, being deaf or hard of hearing, um, turned out to be just the right skill for that situation. But now we don't have to go to such great lengths to have our cause be heard. For one thing, organizing a protest can be done through social media. You can take out your smartphone while at the protest and live stream to all your friends and in fact to anyone across the globe. And one of the problems that the protesters in the Section 504 sit-ins had was that they couldn't communicate well with the other nine simultaneous protests going on, on around the nation. So what resulted was that all of those other ones, except for the one in San Francisco, closed down. Had they been able to bolster one another and relay information, that probably would not have happened. I say this all to encourage you to look beyond what you're currently doing with your smartphone now and understand what an effective tool it can be for changing our world, for making it a more equitable and better place for everyone. We don't have to look very far into the past to see how our ability to organize and relay information and make our voice heard has been transformed by disruptive innovation. Don't take for granted the capabilities that technology has given us and the opportunity that you now have literally at your fingertips. Thanks for watching and I hope you have an amazing day challenging the status quo.